Welcome back to another video here on Free Will Photos. Today, we are going to recolor this image and get this final result. Now, everything I'm showing you can be done inside of Online Photo Raw 2022 and beyond. So if you don't have 2023, don't worry about it. If you would like to follow along with this tutorial, check the description box below. There's a link to the Unsplash collection where you can find this image or any image that you so choose that you wanna follow along with this tutorial. If you don't already have On One Photo Raw, you can save 20% at checkout by using Free Will Photos 20. That discount code is in the description box below as well. And if you're not already a member over on Free Will Photos, what are you waiting for? So without further ado, let's go ahead and dive into the edit. So here we are with the original photo. Now, what you probably didn't notice in the display version is this little text down here at the bottom. So what I'm going to do is use my magic eraser. I'm just going to grab that real quick and then click and drag over this. And uh, this does a really good job of getting rid of that text. It's already pretty dark, so not a big deal. It was just distracting to me in the original image as well as this little speck right here. So I'm just going to click there, get rid of that real quick. And now we'll be able to go on with the edit. So the first thing that we need to do is actually add in the replace color filter. To do that, we're going to click on effects, add filter, and it's down here at the bottom of the center column, replace color. And if you haven't used this filter before, it's actually really, really simple. All you have to do is click on the eyedropper tool, click anywhere in the image of a color that you want to replace to sample it. And now what it's done is it's taken this target color and replaced it with the color down here. Now, if I drag this slider left and right, you can see that it's modifying the colors all over the place. Now I'm going to turn this off so you can see what it originally was. And we want to make this more of a purple color overall, or at least that's what I want to do. So what I'm going to do is click on the color change target and I'm just going to drag this down until I get to a nice purple that I think would look good. And this is a darker image, so I'll pull the purple a little bit more to the, the darker side, eh, maybe brighter because it was originally neon. And one of the tricks to using this particular filter is making sure that whatever your original color was, that you keep it pretty close to the same. Now, what you're noticing is it's not as natural looking as the original color, and that's because of the range. So I'm just gonna pull the range up, so that way it's sampling more colors that are similar to this pink in the overall image. And that's going to help with blending this effect and making it look a little bit more natural. So if I pull this up, and I could probably pull it quite a bit because that's going to work out pretty good. So let's look at a quick before and after. Here's before the replace color filter, and here is after the replace color filter. Now let's go ahead and take a look at modifying the light in this image. The first thing that I want to do is add a bleach bypass. Now bleach bypass is just going to help with this contrast. As you see, when I apply it, it just makes the overall image really, really dark and more moody. And I don't need this to be like an extremely moody image, but it is shot at night. It's in the dark. So, you know, we'll go ahead and make sure that we add that in there. So I'm just going to pull that down just a little bit and maybe even pull down on the brightness or, you know, we'll pull up on the brightness uh, because I like what it's doing over here, which is where we're going to start working in a little bit. But I also like how it's making the light here pop and we're going to control that a little bit later. Now, you can also add in some detail. I would be careful with this because, as you see, when I pull this up, Look at how that really grunges up the sign. You may like that. You may not. I personally don't for this image. So I'm just going to double click and reset that to its normal detail. Uh, the sign, that is the way that it is. And I'm okay with that. 
And then, of course, you can saturate your overall color uh, depending on what it is that you want to do. Now, what I do want in this particular image is a little bit more of that blue overlay added into my color uh, overall and the, or that purple look, the, the look that we have going here. So what I'm going to do is click on my tint selector. I'm going to grab this eyedropper and I'm just going to go sample a purple color that I would like to see over the entire image. I'm going to go ahead and pull this up the amount slider. And this is just adding in more of that purple color. So it's helping tie that replace color in, uh, especially in those areas that it didn't sample originally when I pulled up on the range for the replace color. So this is just really making the photo pop a little bit more and making it, in my opinion, more believable that it was shot this way. And that's the goal, at least for me. Now, what I'm going to do is relight this area over here. We can see that there's already some blue tones that are existing, and that's what we want to enhance. So to do that, I'm just going to come over here to the local adjustment, and I'm going to reset this and click on paint with color, and then I'm going to select just a blue that I think would work with this image, and you could always re retune this or refine this later. But I'm just going to select a blue, maybe right in here. And I want it to be bright because it's a light. And now what I'm going to do is I'm going to grab my masking bug. And I'm just going to click down here. We're going to invert this by moving it to edges. And it's going to cover up our subject. We don't want that. So I'm just going to bring it down until it starts to fit better in the area. Now I'm going to re direct this light in the way that it moves or uh, the, the way that it covers our subject by putting the light more in the area that it belongs in. And then I'm just going to drag it out. And what I'm looking at is the light fall off. And I want this to fall off as naturally as it can. Uh, but again, we're going to tailor this. So what I'm going to do is drag this out a little bit more and pull on the feather and it and this can also be fine-tuned as well later down the line so if you don't get it right the first time or if it looks weird after you start to fine-tune it then you can always come back and uh, re-edit this particular shape and I'll show you how so what we're gonna do is start with our blend modes and this is a little bit more of that advanced uh, blending options if you will but what we're going to do is change our blend mode. Uh, when I made the first image, I think I used hard light. So we'll go with hard light. And you can see that that just gives the glow overall to the image. And that's really, really cool. But it doesn't look like it fits in, in my opinion. Uh, the reason the light wraps around over here, which that could be easily solved by grabbing the brush tool. And with a paint out, you can just and a uh, a large brush paint out with a hundred percent feather, you can just paint right over these areas, and you know really fine tune the way that this light is interacting with your photo. Now, what I may end up having to do is cropping the photo so that way the light stops here because it's all black down there. So why not? Let's do that right now. So we'll hit the letter C, and we're just going to leave it on original ratio. I'm going to pull up on this area here until I get there. Then I'm just going to re or recenter uh, our subject here. And I'll even pull down on the top. So that way we're really focusing in on her. Now I didn't do this on the first one, but uh, this is just the reality of photo editing. Sometimes you catch things uh, in your second pass of an image than you did the first time. So there we go. We have a new composition and the light is going to work a little bit better for us uh, overall. And then I'm going to get my brush tool again and I'm just going to refine this little area right up here. And 
you know, this is going to take some time. Uh, you're not going to be perfect at it the first time out of the bat. And that's OK. Now, what I will say is you can also bring your opacity down. This makes it a little bit easier for you to uh, make some more passes. And the reason why you would do that is it's going to take more clicks or more passes over an area in order for that particular area to be fully affected. Now, I do want her to have some of this light over her face, so I'm going to turn my brush to paint in, and I'm just going to click here until that light is over her face where I want it. Now, I do think that it is a little harsh on her face, so I'll hit uh, Shift X, and I'm going to paint out just a little bit on her face because uh, I don't think that it needs to be as strong on her face and it also doesn't need to be as strong on her skin here. Another way that you can modify this is by pulling on the skin slider underneath your settings, your blend option settings. Uh, if you pull up on the skin slider, it'll start to remove that from the skin tones uh, and that can make it look a little bit more natural. But one of the best ways that I have found to make this look the most natural is by just pulling down on the opacity slider until it starts to blend with the overall image. And I think that that looks pretty good. So you should always turn the image or the adjustment off and turn it back on and see if it makes sense uh, to your overall photo. Now, to tie all of this together, what I like to do is one, let me rename this, okay? And then we'll go ahead and add a new adjustment, grab our masking bug, and I am just going to click over our subject. And now I will resize this uh, in the same direction as the light. So the light was going diagonally up. I want the masking bug to go in the same direction, but I want it to be a little bit larger because I want to dim everything else behind her or around her and make the rest of the photo uh, dark, right? Uh, now, with that being said, I need to pull this a little bit more into the, uh, the light and we'll go something like that. Yeah, I think that works. Okay, so if I turn this off and on, you can see that it's already dimmed everything. I don't see a halo around her, which is a good sign. That means that it's blending pretty well. Uh, but what I want is the background to not be so obvious. And there's a few ways that you can attack the background. Uh, and I'll show you two here. So I'm going to click on effects. I'm going to hit add filter. And the first one is the blur filter. And this is pretty straightforward. Uh, all I need to do, in fact, I'm just going to come back to our local adjustments and I am going to copy that mask and then paste it. So that way I have that. Now, this looks pretty bad right now. All right. And the reason for that is it's not believable that the lens would have just focused in right there. And that's why you have to modify your mask. So I'm going to pull down on the amount of the Gaussian blur because I don't need like a crazy amount. But now we're starting to see that fall off challenge right here. Uh, so maybe you can just pull this out all the way across your image, but then you get part of the sign in focus, part of it not in focus. Uh, and then you could also just pull it all the way down. And now you got our hair out of focus. So you got to find that happy medium, right? Uh, and then the easiest way is just to mess with the opacity. And that's going to give you a more natural look. So if I turn this off and turn it back on, you can see that that looks pretty decent. All right. Now I'm going to turn this off, hit add filter. And some of you may have guessed it. You can use the lens blur effect. Now, the lens blur effect is actually pretty cool in the way that it works. I'm just going to paste our mask back on here uh, and we'll reposition it to make it make sense for our overall image. And I think we're going to need to pull that up a little bit more. 
I'm okay if a little bit of her hair is out of focus because that would be normal. Like this looks more normal just with that base edit. This looks way more natural uh, and appealing overall. Now I can pull down on my amount. Let me just minimize this for a second. Uh, and I can also mess around with the optical quality. So if I want a less optical uh, quality look, then I can pull it down or I can pull it up and get a little bit more fine tune. Um, you can really play around with this. I'll do a separate video on how to use the lens blur effect. But in my opinion, this looks a lot better than this version. Like this version just looks really soft and uh, you're, you're going to have a hard time trying to get that Gaussian blur to work. Whereas with this, if you just want that lens blur effect, you can throw that in there and you modify the amount and, you know, something. And that's just like way too obvious. Right. Uh, and if you if you do like that, you can just pull this down right inside of here and then blur that out a little bit more. Uh, that could work, but spatially it doesn't fit because she's closer to that background than you would think, or I'm sorry, she's closer to the background than we are giving the impression of. And so that's why that just doesn't work. So, you know, making it believable, you want to pull down on the amount. And this looks more believable that she would have been in that area uh, based off of where she is to the background it's more believable that that's as much blur that would be in there. Hopefully that makes sense. So let's take a look at the before and the after. As you can see, we changed the color. We modified the overall look of the image. We added in a color glow. And we also made the background a little bit more out of focus using lens blur. So let me add one more thing to this image that I didn't add to the original one, and that's a glow. I think that this image would do really good with a glow. So we'll just add one and see what happens when you apply it. It doesn't do anything. And then you got to like crank up on this thing, maybe mess around with a halo a little bit. So we'll select screen and we'll pull down on the amount just a little bit because this is a more believable overall look. So here's the final image. This is the before and here is the after. Hopefully you found value in this content. If you did, smash the like button. And if you're new here, consider subscribing. Come join us over on freewillphotos.com in the free community because there's a lot of great photographers sharing work there. And I'd love to see your work in that community. If you got questions, leave them in the comment section below. Let me know how you plan to use the recolor tool inside of On One Photo Raw. If you don't have On One Photo Raw and you want to save 20% when you pick it up, use Free Will Photos 20 at checkout and you'll save 20% on the standalone version of On One Photo Raw. Until the next time, I want you to stay inspired and keep creating. Peace.